Hello, we're going to uh, go through the midterm review for the Math 1100 Quantitative Skills and Reasoning class, uh, and we're going to do it in segments. Um, so our first question, write a description of the set April-August. Well, we need to write a description that is specific enough that any other person would also come up with April and August. Uh, the set of months that have four more letters, well, that would include many more months than April and August. So the set of months includes ten more months. Uh, the set of the sixth and seventh months of the year is very specific, but April is the fourth month. Uh, the set of months that begins with A is going to be what we're looking for. So the answer to this one will be D. For number two, uh, it wants us to decide if this is a subset or not a subset. The null set is going to be a subset of the set PQR. And that's because the null set or the empty set is a subset of all sets. Okay, for number four, we need to find the intersection of A complement and B complement. So first, let's find A complement and Complement just means everything that is not in that set but is in the universal set. So A has 1, 2, 4, 5, and the universal set is numbers 1 through 7. So A complement has 3, 6, 7 in it. B complement is going to work the same way. B has 1, 2, 3. So B complement has 4, 5, 6, and 7 in it. And then for intersection, that means what do these two sets have in common? So A complement and B complement both share sixes and sevens. So the answer to number three is going to be the set six comma seven. For number four, we needed to determine if A union the empty set equals the empty set. Union means all the elements from both sets. So A union the empty set is actually going to be A. So the correct answer is B. For number five, let U equal the numbers one through ten, so that's the universal set. A is three, five, six, ten, B is one, nine, ten, and C is one, two, three, four, five we need to find the following set. We want to find the intersection of A union B and A union C. So first, let's find A union B. And again, this means that we're going to include um, all the numbers from A and B, or all the elements from A and B. We will not repeat elements. So we combine A and B, or do the union of A and B. We're going to get 1, 3, 5, 6, 9 and 10 and then for B union C, or sorry A union C we're going to get the set 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 10 and now intersection of these two sets means we need to find what they share and if we look we can see that both of these sets have a 1 both sets have a 3, both sets have a 10, and both sets have a 5. So we're looking for the set 1, 3, 5, oh, there's also a 6, 1, 3, 5, 6, and 10. For number 6, oh, excuse me, too far. For number six, a math tutor working with a small study group has classified students in the group by whether or not they scored 90% or above on each of the, th of the three tests. The results are shown in the Venn diagram to the right, and we want to find the set of students that scored 90% or above on exactly one test. Well, in looking at all of these students, the ones that scored 90% or better on more than one test are the ones that are in overlaps of these circles. So Dawn scored over 90% on exams 1 and 2, Huey on all three exams because all three circles overlap here, and Ollie scored over 90% on exams 1 and 3. 
which means that Roz, Ken, Cam, Al, Gus, Flo, Pat, Mel, and Lon all scored 90% uh, or higher on just one of the exams. So that answer will be C. For number 7, it wants us to evaluate x squared plus 7 whenever x is 5. When evaluating the variable, uh, whenever evaluating a value for a variable, first replace the variable with parentheses and write everything else just as it is, and then substitute the value in. So this is going to be 5 squared plus 7. So 25 plus 7, which is going to be 32. For number 8, it wants us to simplify the algebraic expression. When doing this, you just need to remember to start on the inside and work your way out. And what I mean by that is we need to start by clearing those parentheses first, and then we'll clear the brackets. So to clear the parentheses, because we can't bump combine 7 and minus 4x, we're going to distribute this negative sign. Whenever we do that, the first part stays the same, but now we're going to have a negative times a 7, which will be negative 7, and a negative times a negative 4x, which will be a positive 4x. We can combine like terms within the brackets. So we combine that 6 and that 7. We're going to get negative 1 plus 4x. And now we need to distribute this negative 2. And when we do that, the 4x stays, but we'll have negative 2 times negative 1, which will be positive 2. Negative 2 times positive 4x, which will be negative 8x. And now we combine like terms. The 4x and the negative 8x will go together. So, we have a minus 4x plus 2 as our answer for number 8. For number 9, it just wants us to find the value of x and the proportion, and then we need to check our answer. To do that, we're just going to want to cross multiply. And cross multiplying means taking, because it is a fraction equals a fraction, we can do that. There's nothing else extra beyond these two fractions. So we're going to do 9 times 8 and 3 times x. So we have 9 times 8 equals 3 times x, which is 72 equals 3x. And then to solve, we're going to divide both sides by 3. So we cross multiply and divide. And whenever we simplify 72 over 3, we're going to get 24 equals x.